Oh my god! I think that'll be it. Whoa! Whoa. Oh my god, what is going on? Hi, I'm Lavi. And I'm Ollie. And this is our hero, Bumblebee. Together, we are attempting a Guinness World Record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by, by motorcycle. motorcycle. Join us for season three here in South America. Good morning. It's a cold morning in the desert and we're going to be swimming in a salt lagoon in one hour. to these guys. Good morning world, welcome back to the channel. It's day number 300. 300! 300, <laughs> 300 <laughs> days on the road! <laughs> on our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. We are here in Laguna Piedra in the Atacama Desert in Chile. <laughs> and we are sharing a swim this morning with some flamingos behind us, <laughs> which is absolutely crazy. And it's super salty water. Look how we're floating. It is the saltiest lagoon here in Chile. And you just lay down actually. That's crazy. It's so cool. You can see a massive volcano just behind us. The location is just stunning. Yes, we woke up early to get here for a beautiful dip, but we got a really exciting day ahead. So let me show you guys where we're headed. So today we are going to be making our way from Laguna Seja back up to San Pedro de Atacama before taking this little road up to the El Tatio geysers. Then we have to decide if we're either going to continue up on that road up to Olague and cross the border to Bolivia here or return back to San Pedro de Atacama, head across to Paso Llama down here, across to Argentina and up to Bolivia that way. Yesterday is a really exciting day because we are not gonna just swim in a massive lagoon here, floating along. We also see a massive geyser. Yes, we're heading to a place called El Tatio, which is basically a big geothermal area full of geysers and steam, and we get to ride our bike around through it. So it's gonna be absolutely awesome. So we will enjoy this place here now, and then we are ready to hit the road. Nice. The crazy thing about it is that this water is actually 18 meters deep. Which is kind of scary actually. It's like a big blackness beneath us. But the water is so salty that apparently there's nothing, there are no monsters inside basically. <laughs> I hope. And even though it's only nine o'clock in the morning, the water is a beautiful temperature. The sun is shining. Whee! And it's awesome. <laughs> Wow, look at this. Whew. So salty everywhere. This place has a sticker and Noe here is going to stick it on our box. Yes. <laughs> Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> Bravo. Okay. Beautiful. With a nice flamenco. Yes. <laughs> Muchas gracias. gracias. <laughs> our little washing line here, trying to dry off our stuff while it's riding. We just fixed it on here somehow. <laughs> Ready to hit the road. Gracias, ciao. <laughs> what a nice start for the morning. <sighs> I'm so relaxed, really, I'm so relaxed. Yeah, that's the perfect, perfect way to start, eh? Oh, look, some bikers here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a nice shower as well. A complimentary shower with our ticket is always worth it. <laughs> yes. 
Actually, we mostly just book our attractions based on whether we can get a shower or not. <laughs> Yeah, so the swim costs us actually 15 pounds per person and you are allowed to swim for 30 minutes. And we had the whole lagoon to ourselves when we arrived. So yeah, that was cool. Pff, incredible. So now we're going to be heading back up to San Pedro de Atacama and on our way to the El Tatio Geysers. made it back to San Pedro de Atacama and we've just filled up Bumblebee but man Bumblebee was nearly nearly out of fuel going all the way down and all the way back over the last two days I think we did around 220 miles on the tank and our range is about maximum 250 so it was pretty close but we're also taking the opportunity to have a bit of a snack break Whee! I just made some sandwiches with some avocado I cut a little bit onion on top as well our beloved goat's cheese. Do we still have some goat's cheese left? Yes. <laughs> we still have some goat's cheese left. Yeah, I think you're transforming into a goat. <laughs> okay, lunch break over. We're leaving San Pedro behind. And we have now 48 miles to get to the El Tatio Geyser Field. At the moment, the road is absolutely amazing, but we have a turn off in 12 miles, so that may change. Out of the town and back into the desert. We're getting up high already. Look at this road. Epic views from up here. And we can still see in the background the volcano Menisquez, 5,900 meters tall, and a whole load of crazy mountains of the Andes. Yeah, so pretty. I saw the sign, it said Zona de Curvas Peligrosas, the zone of dangerous bends. Uh oh. Bumblebee! 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 <laughs> so we're climbing up to a pretty high altitude to get to this geyser field today. I think the geyser field sits at around 4,200 meters above sea level. So it's going to be another high altitude day. The last time we were left feeling pretty dizzy, banging headache. But maybe we've acclimatized a bit now. We'll see. Whoa, look at the size of these cactuses up on the hill. Oh, they must be like three meters tall. It looks like the perfect uh, cactus. Yeah. Like the, the ones you can see everywhere, like in drawings and stuff. <laughs> That's these ones. That's where they are. Look, the entire hill here is covered in cactuses. That's cool. Wow, look at this road, hey? Oh yeah, coming down into a crazy gorge now. Look at this. Epic, man. That's the thing about going to see these crazy places up here in the mountains is half about the destination where you're going and half about the road to get there. Yeah, epic road here, epic road. <laughs> the cactus is up there. <laughs> it's like they're watching us. Oh yes, they're that's great. Oh. I'm just gonna put my feet down. Yeah. Ready. Yeah, and he swung out super wide. Yeah. I guess he can't really do the turn without doing oh, that. Nice one. Cool. Coming through a giant boulder field. Look at this. Whoa. This road is full of surprises. I could just see the traction control light going all the time. Like, track, 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 track. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? I'm trying to sort out your traction here. Little mountain village here, Machuca. Nice. Well, what 
a place to live, hey? What a place to live. Don't let us disturb you guys. Wow. Beautiful vicunas right here. They're very cute. Very cute. But this road is pretty corrugated here. Up on the high plateau here. It is bumpy. Yeah, I'm really worried about our drones. Yeah. And look, the Garmin's going crazy. The GoPro's going crazy. Hi, buddy. Oh. Look, these guys are eating vegetation from the uh, from the river or lake here. Look at this. And there's a little baby one over there. And look at this crazy volcano in the distance with covered in ice. What a crazy scene. So we're just going to put our drones, move them from the rear box to the tank bag. Might be a little bit less vibrations there because, yeah, it is a bit worrying that they're shaking around. And this is kind of probably what broke both of them the last time, hey? Yeah. Yeah, we'll hope for the best. See you later, guys. See you later. <laughs> guys. <laughs> This oh. road is absolutely crazy. <laughs> oh my god. And up ahead, there's this crazy volcano, but it is covered in dark clouds. And we just saw a minute ago a lightning strike just up ahead. Yeah, it was one of the beautiful ones, just like, you know, straight down and then a zigzag, and wow, it looked so cool. Yeah, it's cool, but it's a bit scary at the same time because that's basically the direction we're headed. It does not look very good weather there. Really interesting to get rained on in one of the driest places on Earth. It might well happen. But yeah, the road is very, very bad now. Yeah, 13 miles to go. It's an amazing view, but a terrible road. Oh my goodness. Aye, aye. Oh. Getting harder to breathe as well. Huh. Woo. Jesus. We are so close to this rain cloud as well. <laughs> it's literally only half a kilometer that way, I reckon. Let's hope for the best because otherwise there will be here a big mud uh, pool. <laughs> on the way back finally arriving at the Tatio geyser wow that was some crazy journey man i expected something from that road but i think that was even more than i expected yeah Ooh. hola hola is it is stationamento aquí ah perfect all right we have got our tickets we've filled out all the necessary paperwork and we are now going in to the El Tatio Geyser Field. So it was 30,000 pesos for both tickets, 15,000 each, that's 30 pounds. And crazy enough, up here you can pay with cards. <laughs> that's really crazy. And it's really cool because we can ride our bike through this whole geyser field, which is just crazy. And we can actually ride through an active geyser field. I love it. So the El Tatio geyser field has 80 geysers here, making it the largest geyser field in the southern hemisphere and the third largest geyser field in the world. Some of the geysers have been known to erupt up to six meters high. I can see some activity over there. Oh yeah, I can see a geyser erupting. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go ah, check it out. Yes. Okay, hold on a minute. Okay. Got some muddy bits. But yeah, there is something going on over there! We are basically alone here! <laughs> it's true! So not only were we alone this morning at Laguna Sejao, but now we get to experience this crazy place all to ourselves. Wow, look! He's like spitting, spitting, hold spitting! On, on. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, we've got a pothole, pothole. Okay. Potholes and mud. Uh-oh. Oh! Yeah, this geyser here is going crazy! Can you feel the heat as well? Wow, I can feel the heat! Whoa! 
<laughs> it feels like that they're just so turned on the uh, switch, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, there are tourists, let's turn on the switch. Exactly. Guys, I feel go. Yes, exactly. Oh, how cool. How cool. What a nature of wonder, hey? Absolutely amazing. <laughs> and it's really interesting because the water here is boiling, but water at this altitude boils at 85 degrees instead of 100 degrees. So this water is only 85 degrees. So it's not that hot. <laughs> <laughs> not that hard. Let's have a shower. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. And it's really interesting because uh, vents like these around this geyser field are actually sites where extremophiles live. They're called hyperthermophiles and um, they've actually been modeled as an analog of what it might have been life on early Earth and possible previous life on Mars. Awesome! Whoa, and these are all bubbling away. Oh, and one up over here as well. <laughs> Whoa, there is just steam everywhere. Look at this one. Nice. Wow. Really, really cool. Oh my God, did you see that? There's some lightning in the background. Whoa, and that's just where we came from. I think we just missed that rainstorm. Oh my God, look how close we can get to these geysers. Whoa. Wow, wow. that's... Wow. Is it kind of orange? It's right? Yeah, this orange and these crazy colors, those are the extremophiles. Those are the organisms living and feeding off of the uh, minerals and, and the warmth. There was some more lightning up ahead. Oh my god. Oh, that's getting a bit scary, eh? We gotta go back that way. Yeah, I know. But look, look, look. Whoa! <laughs> that is amazing, eh? Yeah. That is amazing. Wait, listen, listen. It's making like a gurgling. Look, 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 look. Whoa. It's not hard to imagine where the warmth from all of these guys. Oh my god! I think we have to. Oh my god. Oh. oh god. Okay, that's actually really scary, hey. Heart attack! Oh my god. Oh, oh my god! <sighs> that's actually a very, very dangerous situation to be in right now. Do you think we should uh, head back to the bike? Yeah, probably. Like, that's actually super scary. <sighs> oh my god. It's so close, the lightning is so close. We just saw the lightning and straight after the, the thunderstorm. Oh my god. <sighs> that lightning was super, super close. It was so close. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. And also because we have to go back. Oh, I just saw another lightning strike over there. Okay. Anyway, we have decided that we actually go back and that we take the border crossing, the Yama border crossing into Argentina because it's just too much work to go all the dirt road back up to Bolivia and especially when the rain starts now, it will be completely muddy and completely like horrible. Yeah, I think the best thing we can do right now is to try to get back to San Pedro de Atacama, hey. Before it gets too rainy, too muddy, too bad. Yeah, and I don't want to get hit by lightning. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, you see that in the background? Yes. I don't know if I've ever been that close to a lightning bolt before. Jesus. Oh my God. I think at least if we get struck by lightning on the bike, because the rubber tires uh, insulate us from the ground, I think that might protect us. <laughs> I mean, they say that if you get struck by lightning in a car, that you don't get affected by it. Okay, but the, you have the car around you. I don't know. Yeah. Whoa, up ahead there was even more. It's a lightning day, eh? Yeah. And you just see how snowy the peaks are now of the volcanoes in front of us. <sighs> yeah, I think it's literally snowing right there. Crazy place. We just thought we'd stop off at one more crazy, smelly guys event before we left the park. Oh my God, that is a bubbling cauldron of water. Wow, that's crazy. This entire water is just bubbling. So nice and warm. It's nice, hey? Yeah. Wow. 
Oh, did you hear that? I'm not excited. I can barely see anything. Oh my god. Oh, this has been an afternoon of extremes, that's for sure. I think we're the extreme of files. Oh my god. Okay, we've got a little bit of hail on us. And the weather is not looking good. And uh, the people working here basically said to us, Oh, you guys better get on your way because the weather is not going to get better. Yeah, they say actually. It's due to rain the most, it rains in a year here. Yeah, but at the moment it's not even raining, it's hailing. Oh, Yeah, and these roads are probably not going to get better in the rain, so we've really got to start making our way back. Oh my goodness. It's lightning up the whole time, it's like really thunderstorm. Yeah, you can hear them. It's the worst weather for this road now, and we have about two hours. Yep. <sighs> So, not cool. No, it's not too cool at the moment. Let's just uh, try and press on and get down a bit, to be honest, from this high altitude. What a weather change. What yeah, change. maybe this was the reason that we, that we were the only ones there. <laughs> maybe other people were smart enough to check the forecast. Yeah. But yeah, we're not going to try any passes today. We no. are heading back to San Pedro. And uh, I think that'll be it. Whoa! Whoa. Jesus. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh my God. And it's like, because of the road, we can't even go very fast to get back. I just have to like bumble along at 20, 30 miles an hour whilst thinking, am I going to get struck by lightning at any time? Yeah. Oh man, this is really, really not a good situation. It's just a little bit too crazy for this afternoon. I was expecting a little bit more of a chill one. Yeah, can you believe how we started the morning? <laughs> yeah, swimming! Literally! <laughs> what a ridiculous day. At the moment the bike is reading 5 degrees. Wow! Which is a massive change from something like 25 when we were down in San Pedro. So wow, it is super harsh conditions up here. Freezing cold. Yeah, my fingers. Yeah. Yeah, it gets colder and colder. It's getting colder and colder. And we still have to climb up a little bit. I really didn't expect that. Wow, it changed so fast. So fast. Oh my god, look at this valley ahead. What? It's like <laughs> white. It's turned from summer to winter in one <sighs> afternoon. In literally one hour. Oh. Four degrees. Whoa, look at the road. Oh my god. It's completely covered. What is going on? I don't know. Okay, I think that's really dangerous actually now. Yeah, we'll just take it easy here. Yeah. Garmin just shut itself off. It's too cold. It looks like really icy. And slushy, it's, it's really slushy. Look down that road. It's just white. And our road is white. Oh my god. I'm just gonna have to take it super easy now. Wow. 80 kilometers. 80 kilometers to get back to San Pedro. Jesus. I can't feel my fingers. Oh, Jesus. Oh, wow. <sighs> Down here, what is that? I can't, I can't see anything. Oh, here. Yes, here, look. Here. 
Yeah. <sighs> We've lost a bolt. We're going to have to put something in there. Cable tire. Okay. <sighs> oh, my fingers. Oh. Maybe you put two in. We lost the bolt on the other side as well. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Oh no. Oh, okay. So we need a cable tie on that side as well. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Might have to take her a little bit slower then, hey? You put on the yeah. Okay, we're going to have to take it much slower and easier now because we don't have that many cable ties, so we cannot afford for this front mudguard fix to break again because the corrugation is just insane. And there's really nothing we can do here except just go over every bump. So our cable ties totally broke off straight away after about two minutes these people just stopped and tried to find something to help us to put in that little hole but uh they didn't really find anything um so we have a few options we're trying some more cable ties otherwise we're going to use this bit from the sunglasses and try to bend it around and make a little knot out of it that's like option b if the cable tie doesn't hold but fingers crossed second cable tie application is going to take us to the edge of this corrugation so we've been checking the cable ties every 10 minutes or so and so far they're holding and off in the distance we can see a patch of blue sky <laughs> this is where we're heading that's where we're heading i just really hope we can start going down in altitude and, and then it can start getting a little bit warmer yeah oh, man Ugh to go so slow on this corrugation it's a really bad road storm salvation we can just see where we need to be over yeah. there oh man wow crazy that volcano that we saw yesterday the whole day wow here we have an amazing view of volcano Minisquez is now completely covered in snow and ice so we are finally getting down into lower altitude now and literally where we are now it hasn't even rained it's still completely dry here but you can see out in the desert how the storm has just made a huge load of wind and sand it looks unreal really that's crazy here you've got rain and then over here and over here, just huge, huge walls of sand. Wow. That's insane. But the temperature down here is much warmer and it is amazing. And I'm starting to feel my fingers again. It's actually 19 degrees down here already. Whoa, I just saw lightning over there. Yeah, wow, it nearly took us two and a half hours to go down here from up there it was really challenging but oh my god i'm so glad <sighs> yeah it was a long and cold road <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm so i'm so happy now 19 degrees oh san pedro de atacama right in front of us <laughs> we made it <laughs> happy and alive <laughs> uh, no you have to wait till the end of the day to say that <laughs> it is 20 degrees down here it is beautiful there's a little bit of rain still coming in from behind us but it's looking a lot nicer down here i tell you that it looks like yeah a completely different world down here we are having something warm to eat having a nice cheesy empanada from the very same petrol station that we were at this morning. I think we deserve that, hey? Mm -hmm. 
So it's getting pretty late now. Yeah, so we found another spot on I Overlander and we are heading there now. It's about 10 minutes away and we will check out if we can pitch up the tent. Yeah, we've got a place pretty close to town. So basically if the weather is good enough tomorrow, we're going to head straight for Paso Yama, straight over to the border to Argentina. This is how it looks like on the driest place on earth. So we've made it to our camp area just outside of town and it's literally raining here. It's ridiculous. How is that possible? Of all the things I expected from the Atacama, I did not expect it to be raining, storms, hail, snow in the summer. I don't know what to believe anymore. Remember when we were in the Sahara? Exactly. We had exactly the same issue in the summer. I don't know. I don't understand. Anyway, we will wait a few minutes for the rain to calm down and then we will set up our camp. We have chosen this tree here. It's pretty wind protected. The wind is coming from the mountains, so we're sort of behind and it's quite a big wide bush tree thing. But we have to be pretty careful because all on its branches are um, spines. <coughs> so we had to like clear an area for the tent so we don't get the spines coming through and into our blow up mattresses. And this is a spiny tree as well. But oh my God, what a crazy day today. I just can't believe it. Like the most incredible nature mixed with so much drama and stress is yeah, it was an absolutely beautiful start and it was beautiful, but maybe it just got a bit too much in the end. And we were seriously worried about how long it was going to take us to get down, how cold it was getting, how bad the roads were getting. So yeah. it's a big relief to be down here Definitely. Yeah. and we could make our camp and have a good rest. Yes, and that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below. And if you really, really, really like the video, then you can join us on Patreon. The link is in the description below and we will see you next time. So the sun came out and look, we have a full rainbow on the horizon. Whew. That's like mother nature saying, oh, sorry for that blizzard I put you in in the middle of the summer. Here's a nice rainbow to make up for it. Wow.